We've all heard about the New Age movement, but what is it? What are its characteristics and its dangers? And how has it impacted the modern day church? Stay tuned for an interview with a former member of the movement. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy and our special guest, Warren Smith, an expert on the New Age movement who was delivered from the spiritual bondage of the movement by the Lord Jesus Christ. Warren, welcome to our program. Thank you. It's good to be here. And my colleague, Nathan Jones, is also uh, with us today. Nathan is going to insist me in uh, uh, interviewing Warren. And Nathan, why don't you kick off the whole thing with the first question, okay? I'd love to. Good to have you on, Warren. Hi. I would love to know your personal story about how you got into the New Age movement. Well, it, uh, I, I wish I could say that it was some kind of great spiritual journeying on my part, but it, it had to do with a waitress that I was fascinated with. Isn't it always a woman? It, it, <laughs> I'm afraid it sometimes <laughs> is. And I, I asked her out and had her over to my house for dinner. And in the course of the evening's conversation, she said that uh, she had a friend of a friend who was coming into town, and she was a psychic. Okay. And would I like to have a psychic reading? And I really, probably coming from Westport, Connecticut, a fairly conservative town, I was a little bit reluctant to get involved with a psychic. But to ingratiate myself with the waitress, I said, sure, why not? So I had the psychic reading. The woman was from Canada. And in the midst of her telling me all sorts of things about myself that she had no business knowing, hmm. I mean, these were not things I shared with the waitress. These were not things that she would know. Uh, I was totally you know enraptured with what she was telling me because i'm going wow she's really in touch with something and then as she was going through this reading there was a tingling sensation over my head that i'd never experienced before it was very bizarre and i'm sitting there going what is going on and she turns to me and she says do you realize that there's a ball of light over your head right now and i said i don't know what that is but i can feel there's something up there and she said it's a ball of light and i said what's the ball of light doing there And she said you have a lot of help on the other side and I said, uh, what do you mean by the other side? And she said, angels, loved ones that have passed on, spiritual beings that are interested in your welfare that want to help you and want to come into your life. And she said, but you have to ask them. It has to be voluntary on your part. So they so, were kind of knocking on the door, so to speak, hoping it, it, to be invited in? Yeah, it was kind of like, you know, you have to do it of your own volition. Okay. So that night I lived in a, a canyon in Northern California and I had a flat-roofed house, and I lay on the, the flat roof of my house, looking up at the starry night sky. I kind of flash back over my whole life, all the things that had brought me to that point. I felt like I was about to do something very, very significant, and it was, but I didn't realize that it was dangerous. I said, all you on the other side, I want your help in my life. I want to be more spiritual. I want to grow. And anybody watching this show that knows the dangers of the New Age and the occult knows that what I just did was kind of like a reverse sinner's prayer. I did the opposite of asking Jesus Christ into my life, which I had no idea, you know, what that was all about at that point in time. So you had no Christian background beforehand? The only background I had was a very liberal, liberal uh, uh, church that uh, just never talked about the reality of evil or a devil or a victory on the cross of Calvary. Uh, it was just a, a very washed out. We sang a few hymns. But other than that, when I, when I left church and went to college, I had my back to the church. I never thought of going to church when I was in college. I was in a fraternity, uh, just the whole thing. So right after I did that prayer, in the coming weeks and months, all of a sudden I start getting spiritual experiences, meeting people. It's, it's like I was being jet propelled into a whole new spiritual experience. And that's one of the dangers of the new age is the fact that you go on spiritual experience and you go on meant to be experiences like things would happen where you'd go oh it was meant to be these coincidences line up and that's how i got involved in the next step of my journey with, with which was with bhagwan sri rajneesh indian guru oh it's a guru <laughs> sound like a deli or... yeah <laughs> <laughs> he he was in india at the time that i got involved with him but it, it, the circumstances are fairly complicated, but I ended up on the top of a mountain on New Year's Eve in Big Sur, California, one of the most beautiful spots on the California coast. 
And uh, I had just bought a book by an Indian master, Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, because I wanted to be start the new year off spiritual. And I had this book in my hand, and usually people stay down in these cabins in the bottom of, the, uh, of this Deachin's Lodge. But the owner came up to me, and he looked deep into my eyes, and he said, how would you like to stay on top of this mountain tonight? And I went, sure. So at sunset, wound our way up the, the mountain, and there was a cabin up there. And when we got up there, it was like being in heaven. There were clouds just from horizon to horizon. It was an incredible setting. Never heard of this guy, Rajneesh. I had this book in my hand. Went into the, the cabin up there, put my suitcase on the ground, and by the bedside, there was another book by Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. And it was kind of like, whoa, whoa, you know, this is meant to be. And I, I just want to caution people that when somebody gives you a copy of a, of a, of a supposed Christian book, uh, and, and it's not, and, and I'm going to give it as an example, like The Shack, and we'll talk a little bit more about that so I, people understand why I consider that book to have some really problematic issues. Mm -hmm. Just because somebody in the morning says, hey, have you read The Shack, or somebody later in the afternoon says the same thing, don't think that, that God's saying, hey, you should read The Shack. It's like meant to be from God, meant to be from the devil. Anyway, all these things were being laid out in front of me. I got very involved. I started doing meditation. Uh, I, I got involved with the Rajneesh movement. Um, I was a fairly, you know, day-to-day -day social worker in my life, and all of a sudden I'm dyeing my clothes orange. <laughs> I even dyed my socks orange. Socks. I, I was I was in a state. You were showing up at work in orange clothes. More than that, I took I put my desk on the floor, <laughs> and I had a picture of Rajneesh over my desk. Whoa! And my boss what was so your... my boss was so dumbfounded. It took him 30 days to tell me to get that desk out of there. <laughs> But it, it just was, I was like the, the token spiritual guy in the office, and I was bringing all this new stuff in. This was fairly early new age. This was like early 1980s. I'm dating myself. Um, so I got involved with Rajneesh. And in the new age, you sort of move into one thing, and then you move into another, and everything piles together. And even though you might be involved with a psychic or a guru or A Course in Miracles, which is my next step, all the bottom lines are the same, which is, you, you are taught that God indwells his creation. God is in everyone and everything. That's the bottom line. I got involved with A Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles is very, it's very important that I explain this because people need to be aware of this because this is what Oprah Winfrey has been pushing. Very strongly. For, yeah. yeah, very strongly since 1992. Um, I heard one Christian leader, Christian figure anyway, say that Oprah has been involved with so many different things, she doesn't really know what she believes. Absolutely untrue. She absolutely has a bottom line new age philosophy and she's been outing it for years. It all fits together. And everything that I did fit together. A Course in Miracles was new revelation that was supposedly delivered by Jesus himself to a woman psychologist, a female psychologist in New York City at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital, a psychologist. Shookman, right? Helen Shookman. Helen Shookman. Yeah. And she heard an inner voice saying, this is A Course in Miracles, please take notes. So she, for seven years, she took down the notes, and, and it was a whole new uh, philosophy about life. It was a whole new religion, if you will. It was New Age Christianity. That's, that's really, there is no such thing as New Age Christianity. It's a, what's the term you use uh, where something contradicts itself within itself? Oxymoron. Oxymoron. You know, but anyway, this Jesus, and I accepted these teachings because they came to me in the same way. You know, I was handed a book by Gerald Jampolsky called Love is Letting Go of Fear in a Massage practitioner program I was in. And this book had all sorts of little spiritual stuff that really felt good. And he said, everything I am telling you in this book was inspired by A Course in Miracles. So I went out, got The Course in Miracles, and started reading it. The Jesus of A Course in Miracles, through Shukman in her writings, says the following things, and they're not true. The recognition of God is the recognition of yourself. The journey to the cross should be the last useless journey. Useless. Useless. This, remember, this is Oprah Christian. Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey has said these teachings from A Course in Miracles can change the world. And you bought into <clears throat> all of this. Yeah, I had no reason not to. I mean, I thought it was new revelation. I thought, hey, I guess there really is a Jesus, and he's bringing these things to a world that's in trouble. You know, this is all done in the name of Jesus. All in the name of Jesus. Um, and so there was another thing that the Jesus of the Course in Miracles said. He said, do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old 
rugged cross. Now, these things wow. are total blasphemy, blasphemy to believers, but for somebody who didn't know what happened on the cross, didn't know that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and defeated the devil and sin on the cross, I just accepted it. Then there was a most interesting statement. Well, he, he said there's no sin, there's no evil, and there's no devil. Okay, wow. you've pretty much turned the Bible upside down. All in the name of what? Love. It's all in the name of love. But the one thing that he said that's really significant, especially today, is that when this Jesus was asked, are you Christ? He said, yes, along with you. Along with you. Along so with you. Back to that old garden lie from Satan that we can be gods. We are all God. We are all Christ. Okay. We save ourselves by recognizing that we are God. The only thing satanic is not believing in your own divinity. Oprah Winfrey said that these teachings can change the world. They've been, she actually had the Course in Miracles taught on her program, on her radio program, daily for a year by Marianne Williamson. So you're really saying that Oprah is a high priestess of the New Age movement? Oprah Winfrey's been outing everything that I was involved in probably since 1987. Uh, it's just, it's incredible. She I mean, has the biggest audience of most of any Yeah, and she's brought on one, one, you know, Betty Eady, who actually made her way into the church with Embrace by the, by the Light, a uh, book that came out, I think, in um, the early 90s. Uh, and she had a near-death experience, this Betty Eady, that she uh, actually was a Mormon, uh, New Age woman, but she presented herself as a Christian. And she said that in her near-death experience, she was told, you know, that God was in her, in the plant, and everything. God indwells His creation. So this, this actually was. These were her book, Embraced by the Light, was in Christian bookstores and received quite a bit of attention. And you read it? I read it on, from a critical standpoint because by that point I was I was a believer. That was in the early '90s. But so, you got really involved in the in the Course in Miracles, as, even as a teacher, didn't you? I, we, my wife and I, which is my girlfriend at the time, were in a course group, uh, sort of one of the early course groups in the Course of Miracles. And every Tuesday night we would get together with our teacher and we would study the Course of Miracles. So we didn't realize that the Course of Miracles was the Bible upside down, all in the name of love, peace, and happiness. You know, it all, you know. And, and I want to say, you know, that there may be somebody watching that doesn't realize that the Bible says that Satan comes as an angel of light. And 1 Timothy 4.1 warns about seducing spirits. And I realized, you know, later that Helen Schuchman had been seduced by this voice saying it was Jesus. In the psychic reading, the ball of light was Satan coming as an angel of light. Uh -huh. But we were, we were riding high. We were doing workshops in our town. We were doing, uh, t teaching the Course in Miracles to anybody that would listen. I, I was running around my workplace. I, had my, I worked with developmentally disabled clients, you know, people that had autism and and were, uh, at that time, the term was mentally retarded, developmentally disabled now. And I would have these guys doing Sufi dances at the, at the sheltered workshop. And, and the, the director of the sheltered workshop, they would look out the window at lunch and they'd go, and I'd be all dressed in orange with all the clients dancing, <laughs> or, there, dancing right? around. Yeah, you know, in my, and, and they'd go, oh, my, what is going on out there? <clears throat> So, so we were. I was telling everybody about the Course in Miracles. I was like an evangelist for the yes, New Age, right. and there were there are so many people that are just like me. They may not be dressed in orange. A lot of us mm -hmm. that were involved with Rajneesh, a lot of them were doctors, lawyers, businessmen, six very successful people. They are now CEOs. They're now the people that are, that are you know running all sorts of things out in the world, and they're dressed normally. They work you know in Silicon Valley and. They have this philosophy. Steve Jobs actually was, you know, he'd gone to India and was very involved with New Age teachings. So everything was just like flying high. Everything was going really well. And all of a sudden, there was some sort of a, a, an ominous, almost kind of a dark presence that seemed to hover particularly or, or plague my wife. And it's like in the New Age, it's important to understand that when you encounter something that seems dark or evil, uh, it, it is not evil because there is no evil in the New Age. It's a manifestation of something within yourself. So you have to go inside yourself to figure out what your fear is and why you're projecting that out into the world. So we did that. You know, is there something that we're afraid of here? Is there something that's, you know, inside us that's manifesting? We, we did all of our affirmations, you know, that we were perfect, that we were God, <laughs> that, that there is no evil, there is no f nothing to fear. And, you know, just because you affirm something, it doesn't make it true. But that, 
was our affirmation. It didn't go away. We went to our Course in Miracles group leaders. They did a little ceremony where we stood in a circle and he prayed a little prayer and sent love and light to whatever was going on. Nothing really happened. As we walked to the door, I turned around and the Course in Miracles group leader was heavily involved with Edgar Casey and a lot of occultic oh, yeah. stuff. And I said, isn't there anything else we can do? And his wife says, put on the full armor of God and stand fast against the wiles of the devil. What? And I, I what? said, what? <laughs> but more than me saying it, her husband said, now, honey, now, now, honey. She says, I'm sorry, but she says, there is a devil. Stand fast and put on the full armor oh of God. Read Ephesians 6. And we kind of left and we drove down to our house. And I'm going, what was that all about? Yeah. And I said, you know, well, let's read it anyway. So we read it. You know, I had a Bible at some one of my client's mothers had asked me at, at work one day. I was visiting her house, and she said, Warren, do you love God? And I said, oh, yeah. And she said, well, tell me about him. And I told her everything about the Course of Miracles and everything, and she just tried to hide her horror. And she said, would you excuse me just one minute? <laughs> and she came back from the other room with a big blue King James Bible, and she said, would you please take this? And I looked at it, and I saw that the color perfectly matched my Course of Miracles books. And I said, oh, sure. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Whoa. Color <laughs> so we had this Bible that we could read. And we read Ephesians 6, and my conclusion after reading it was, you know, Trudy must have, uh, she must have gone to a church, and she must have got that from church, you know, whatever. That was, that was sweet of her, and we just dismissed it. Mm. So meanwhile, we're still dealing with this occasional presence coming in, and in 1983, uh, at Christmas time, we drove down to my, to my girlfriend at the time, my wife Joy now, to her mom's, and we figured we'd leave this behind. Uh uh. We were there just a day or two, and I could see that it was there again. And I, I said, Joy, are you feeling that thing? And she goes, Yeah. And her mother, who'd never met me before, you know, we're meditating, her daughter's kind of acting weird, and she's gone, Oh, so this is the new boyfriend. Uh -huh. So one day, Joy went to visit a friend, and I went down to a bookstore, and I was trying to figure out, you know, what is this all about? And I went to the New Age section of the bookstore. Mm -hmm. And I saw this book called The Beautiful Side of Evil by a woman named Johanna Michelson. Never heard of her, but the title intrigued me, and I pulled it down. And what I started reading was an account of a woman who had a, a, a spiritual journey much like our own. And I just I sat down on the floor, and I started reading, and I went, wow, I got my notebook out. And she was, does, you know, psychic phenomenon and you know, spirits appearing at, at, at her. She was into drama, and there was at this theater one night, there was a spirit, and I'm, I'm going through the whole thing. And then she hit the wall, and all of a sudden she's dealing with darkness. She was a psychic healer in Mexico City, and people were getting healed, and everybody, it was Hermanito, the spirit guy that was working through a woman named Pachita, a channeler. Everybody was seemingly getting healed, and then one day a Christian woman came in, something went awry. And Johanna said that all of a sudden there was this presence of evil, this benevolent spirit guy that seemed so wonderful, all of a sudden had a very ominous kind of... And so I'm just going, whoa. So then all of a sudden she's going over to Switzerland and she's starting to recite scripture and I'm writing down the scriptures and I'm reading, wow, seducing spirits and deception and all this stuff. And I'm writing down notes and all of a sudden a homeless mentally ill guy that I had seen on the streets just a couple of days before came into the bookstore, came over to where I was reading this book and started screaming at me, are you going to buy this book or what? Huh? Are you going to buy this book? And I just went, man, does, does evil know that I'm reading about it? Can evil orchestrate a man right off the street to come in and harass me so I won't read it? Uh -huh. And all I could think of was, I guess so. So I, dis I had worked with a homeless. I'm a so I've been a social worker my whole life. And I was able to dismiss him pleasantly, if, that's, if it was possible. He just left. And I had the solution to dealing with evil that I'd written down from Johanna's book. And I went back the next day when Joy was feeling his presence again. I said, Joy, let's go out in your mom's backyard. I want to try something just a little bit different. Don't be scared. So addressing this presence, I said, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, reading from my notes, I command you to leave. I forbid your presence here. I claim the blood of Jesus Christ upon us. Leave and go to where Jesus would send you. And it was like whoosh. It was like gone. 
And Joyce said, it's gone. What, what was that? I said, I'm not exactly sure, but it has something to do with a victory that Jesus Christ won on the cross of Calvary over evil and over Satan. Hallelujah. Satan. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I said, we need to start reading the Bible, which we did. And we started reading the Bible. I mean, Christians that are maybe watching this program are going, well, didn't you get on your knees and ask the <laughs> Lord? And that? Yeah. As New Agers, we are hardcore. We kept reading The Course of Miracles. We kept reading the Bible. We became convicted. But it took us a number of months before we actually did that. And people have asked me, they say, well, wait a second, Warren. You weren't a believer. How can you? I was wondering that. Yeah. How, yeah. Can, how can you do that? And I think there's two answers. One, I thought of the Ethiopian eunuch. Yes. Mm-hmm. He was reading the book of Isaiah, didn't really understand it. Philip was brought alongside, explained it to him, and what happened? He believed and what? Was baptized right there on the spot. So I believe that Johanna Michelson, as a believer, came alongside me. Okay, mm-hmm. she was in a book, but mm-hmm. I believed what she was writing, what she was telling mm-hmm. me. More importantly, I believed the scriptures and the scriptures described everything that we've been involved in from the ball of light, the psychic, the course of miracles, all that stuff. At some level, I was getting it that there's deception, there's spiritual deception, and that we need to be really, really careful. The other thing that I really need to mention is that in my senior year in college, a number of us were going to go out drinking one night, and we were told that we had a mandatory fraternity house meeting and that we had to attend. And we were really upset because, you know, well, what is it? And they said, Campus Crusade for Christ is coming into the house. We said, Campus Crusade for Christ? We're going out drinking. We We don't have to go to that. (laughs) They said, no, you got to be there. You know, you've got to be there. So we went, and there were three guys, and the first two guys gave their testimony, and we're back there going, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. We're looking at our watch. The third guy, all I heard him say was, what have you got to lose by asking Jesus into your life tonight? And I was just deeply impressed, obviously by the Holy Spirit. But at that time, I, all I knew is I was just impressed. And I, I said to myself, I got nothing to lose. I got nothing to lose. That night, upstairs in the fraternity house, for the first time probably in years, I prayed. Now, I didn't get the stuff about sin. I didn't get the stuff about repentance. I didn't get the stuff about victory on the cross or whatever else he may have mm-hmm. talked about in his testimony. But I Ask Jesus sincerely, if you're out there, come into my life. And as I did, a cherry bomb went off in the alleyway next door. (laughs) And on the radio, you'll never walk alone was praying. And I went, whoa, whoa. (laughs) It was my first meant to be experiences. They might have been real. And then I went to sleep. And the next morning I woke up and it was like the sower and the seed by the wayside. Taken away. I just didn't even think about it. I guess Campus Crusade didn't come back. Mm -hmm. They were brave enough to come into our fraternity house in the first place. They didn't come back, and I just forgot about it. But years later, after we got saved, and we're witnessing to our friends, and we're seeing so many of our friends and coworkers going into the new age, and very few are hearing our testimony. A few did, but so many are going, thanks for sharing, Warren. Thanks, but no thanks. You know, that was the attitude. And we're going, Mm -hmm. but did you hear what happened? And we're laying it out. So I'm driving to work and I'm going, Lord, what's going on? How come people don't get it? How did we get out of the new age? Mm-hmm. And that was brought to my mind. You asked you... me to come into your life back then. And I've been with you through thick and thin. And then I went, whoa. I almost went to India to be with Rajneesh, but I didn't. I almost became a channeler, but I didn't. I almost became psychic, but I never really had that much fascination. I never really worshipped, you know, the figures that I was involved in. It was like a parent with their child on a tether at the yeah. ocean. And I feel like the Lord just allowed me to go my way and then kept me from the real danger because I had asked him. I didn't say be my savior, but I said come into my life. And I think he took that literally and, and really was a savior and did save me. And ultimately I was saved. So that was a long time ago. That was 1984. Let's, let's pause there for a moment. Yeah. We'll come back and pick up where you left okay. off.
Welcome back to our interview with uh, Warren Smith, who is a former member of the uh, New Age movement and uh, now is a writer about the New Age movement. And Warren, I tell you, we really appreciate you being with us. We appreciate your tremendous testimony. I, I didn't interrupt you any when you were going through that because I just uh, was fascinated by it, and I'm sure people were. And I want to say that if you're interested in uh, finding out more about Warren's testimony, uh, you can find it in this book here. It's called The Light That Was Dark, and the subtitle is From the New Age to Amazing Grace. And I tell you what, I met uh, Warren at a uh, conference up in the far part of uh, Canada about a year and a half ago. He gave me a copy of that book, and I just read it transfixed on the airplane as we were coming back and decided right then and there I had to get this guy before a television camera. And I think you'll find this book absolutely fascinating, and we'll tell you how to get a copy of it later on. Warren, uh, why don't you just look directly into that camera in front of you and tell our viewers how they can get in touch with you and your ministry. Uh, we have a website, mountainstreampress.org. It's mountainstreampress.org. And there's an email there that if people have questions or want to make some kind of comment, they're free to email me, and I usually respond to people. And uh, what are some additional books that you have written? Uh, I wrote a book called A Wonderful Deception that really goes into great detail on how a lot of the New Age stuff has come into the church. Okay. I have a book, False Christ Coming, Does Anybody Care? Because all the things that we're talking about right here, the things that happened to me aren't just unique to me. They happen to tremendous numbers of people and it's come into the church and years ago at like in 1976 Chuck Smith wrote a book where he talked about Antichrist revealed conditioning the world for an Antichrist this is all part of the conditioning process. Well I'll tell you what how about coming back next week and let's talking about the impact of the New Age movement on the church. Okay I'd be glad to. Okay great well folks that's our program for this week until next week the Lord willing this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying look up be watchful for our redemption is drawing near. Our guest on today's program, Warren Smith, has written a fascinating book entitled The Light That Was Dark. This book is a sobering warning to the world and to the church that we are being seduced by the same false teachings and the same false Christ that had once driven him into the New Age movement. Warren shares his compelling personal story in which he encountered the spirits of deception and followed their signs and wonders before coming to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This book is available for a gift of $15 or more, plus the cost of shipping. To order a copy, call the number you see on the screen Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, or order online at lamblion.com. Make plans now to join us for our 2013 Bible Conference at the beautiful Allen Performing Arts Center in the suburbs of Dallas, Texas. The conference is scheduled for the last weekend of June, June 28th and 29th. Our theme this year will be Living on Borrowed Time, and will feature an incredible lineup of speakers. Inspired music will be led by Jack Hollingsworth and the Exalt Quartet. The conference is free of charge, but registration is required. You can register at our website at lamblion.com or by calling the number you see on the screen, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return.